Welcome back to Entrepreneurship Tuesday right here on Y in the Morning at Y254 Channel is where you can find us across all our social media handles at Michelle Ashira is where you can reach out to me. In this particular session, uh, we are talking about matters pertaining investments and savings when the, and the youth being concerned on that particular issue. It's more of an untapped investment opportunities for young people. So you're looking at how young people can go about investing, saving during this time of pandemic. I know it sounds a little bit uh, impossible, but uh, in studio I have Hetel Latwani, who is experienced financial advisor, qualified ACCA affiliated, and CF CFA level three candidate. She started out as an accountant, but moved to investment after finding uh, accounting to routine. Thank you very much, uh, Hetel Latwani, for creating time to be with us. Thank you so much, Michelle, and the pleasure is mine. Absolutely. So, yes. setting us off, I would like to find out, is the youth uh, uh, bulging in Kenya a curse or a blessing? It's a blessing. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, do you find, because uh, people may argue in a different way, because the, the youth, the number of the youth in our country, they are the majority, the backbone uh, of the population. But at the same time, we have high level of unemployment and it may cause a little bit of an imbalance if you look at it in a different perspective. Yes, I would say it's a blessing because youth um, is synonymous, synonymous with energy. So having a high level of energy is always good for the economy. High level of unemployment, yes. Um, maybe I think people just need to look at it a bit differently. Um, I think the issue we have in Kenya is all of us want to go to college, university, get degrees and get a job. So it's not possible for the whole of Kenya to be employed or maybe 90% of the youth, right? So I think people need to think of ways they can um, be entrepreneurs or businessmen or have their own hustles without really being employed. So just because you went, for example, and studied engineering doesn't mean that you must do an engineering job or that's where you should end up as long as you find something that you're passionate about because again remember most of the time we use we are choosing careers for ourselves it's not because something it's not something you're really into it's just because it sounds cool to be an engineer or to be an accountant or a doctor or a pilot or something and then when you end up getting there you really most of us feel like okay maybe it's not my thing or, you know, you don't enjoy it as much. And sometimes you do. So, I mean, if you do, by all means, proceed. But if you feel like you either need to sustain a living, you know, sustain yourself, or, you know, you need to earn an income, or you really don't need to enjoy your, you know, you don't enjoy what you're doing, mm -hmm. then it's time to break out and consider something else that, you know, you're employed by no one apart from yourself, and you can still make a good living. All right. Yeah. Uh, speaking about... Uh, everyone wanting the, the white collar job. Yes. And just, you've just brought in the Joakali aspect of yes. it, which is very important. And also the, inter entrepreneur, the business owners, entrepreneurship, entrepreneurs that is. Yes. Do you feel like it goes back to the mindset and do we then, do we question how our mindset or uh, the program, how we are programmed since when we are little and uh, how do we go about changing that? Yes, I would say to um, a good extent it is programming and uh, it's, I guess, the generation that was there before us, for them getting, you know, they came from that aspect of first, there was no one who was educated, and then mm -hmm. all of a sudden education was a big thing, and to be educated and to have a formal white collar job was a big thing. So having parents or, um, you know, elders, elderly siblings or relatives who are having white collar jobs then makes that then becomes the yardstick. Everyone feels that's the benchmark to be measured against. But right now everything has changed, so it may not necessarily work for the generation to come. I would not say maybe for my generation, because I'm not that young, but for the ger generation to come, I don't think white collar jobs is the thing that necessarily must be. So I think it's for all of us as a um, nation, uh, maybe as parents, as siblings, as teachers, or you know, as mentors and coaches to understand that white collars job are not necessarily the only thing. It's not possible for everyone to end up having these jobs. As long as you love what you're doing, it could be anything. You could be a fundi. You might you might have a passion for building furniture. It's hard enough to 
I'll tell you what, we have a service department, um, SciSuits, that's owned by Cyton and we do have, uh, we, you know, we provide short and long term. So we are trying to furnish a penthouse and it's just so difficult for us to get good furniture because if you get good furniture and it's important, it's either very expensive mm -hmm. or you have the very cheap versions of it. So just getting the right design at the right price becomes very difficult. So we are thinking right here, if you had a lot of carpenters out there or fundis who could actually make a good product and market themselves well so that people know they exist, then this is an opportunity in itself. All right. Yeah. And uh, looking at, you mentioned about Saiton and the couple of projects they have. Yes. And going back to it, they have a project for young people, which mm -hmm. is the Money Market Fund. Yes. And I would like to find out, uh, what are a couple of investment uh, opportunities for the young people, not just in the, the Money Market Fund aspect, yes. but just generally? So, so for young people, I think they're there's a wide universe of investments. In looking from an investment perspective, you're better off starting off young than, the, than as you grow old. Because as you grow old, your risk appetite becomes low. That means you can only invest in a certain fixed um, opportunity set of investments, mm -hmm. which have to be you know, less risky, stuff like that, more liquid, um, have stable returns. Mm -hmm. But when you are young, you can actually invest in almost about everything. Mm -hmm. But what I would recommend really for young investors, mm -hmm. um, because also take the practicality in mind, a young investor may not have millions of shillings. Absolutely. So yes, real estate may be a good thing, but mm -hmm. may not be practical at this point in time. Mm -hmm unless you've either inherited or you come from a rich background and you have a lot of money, Very then true. it's a different thing. But otherwise, I would say something like money markets, yes, it's good because you you can start as low as 100 bob. I think 100 bob is um, just a lot of people can actually be able to set that aside. Mm -hmm. The other thing that young investors can do is stocks um, because stocks you just need uh, also like the minimum you can invest in Kenya is 5,000 bob worth of stocks. So that's also a good investment that young people can start with. Right. So these are some of the examples. Of course, there's a lot you can invest in, you know, also businesses. You can do private equity where you can start a partnership with your friend mm -hmm. and, you know, invest in their business. But stocks in something like uh, money markets would be good. So looking, and I think um, investment is something, it's not a one shoe size fits all. So you first have to look at where are you coming from and where are you headed? So what's your financial goal? If you're looking to invest short term, like in the next three months, you need your money back or in the next one month or six months, then money market is definitely good for you because you can put your money at any time and withdraw at any time. But if you're looking at a more long term, um, maybe two years and above, then you would go for something like stocks okay. in money markets, of course. So you can actually divide your investments into long term and short term. Okay. Speaking about just uh, deciding which investment suits uh, each person at, on a personal level and looking at their background, uh, for a young person who is watching this, maybe I came up from the university mm -hmm. and I'm probably just started a small business. And there I am, I have a student loan is waiting for me to pay. Yes. And then there's another perspective or that people tend to think about when we talk about investment, we look at a certain class of people yes. and uh, we think these are just people who have way too much money that they have uh, at their comfort just to, instead of it staying at the bank, let's put it into money market just for it to... Uh, have interest. So the question is, how do you break that mentality? And is it true that just uh, uh, this level of investment just applies for certain people who have, you know, a chunk, of, chunk huge of money just to stay in the, instead of staying in the bank, you know, let it just gain interest. And is it actually workable for a young person who is trying to probably make ends meet and I'm just trying to start up a business, maybe I'm employed. Is it even viable? Is it, is it possible? Yeah, absolutely. So I, and I, I understand people, when people think investment, they think of millionaires who have money to just go invest. But I think investment is more of a necessity rather than, you know, a luxury at this point in time. Even look at the corona, you know, pandemic, how everything is been panning out. Mm -hmm. People who have lost their jobs have realized if you actually had some passive income, mm -hmm. it's what's been keeping most people going mm -hmm. as opposed to, you know, jobs because you either have a pay cut if you're lucky or no job at all. So um, it's actually a necessity and not a luxury. And yes, young people who don't have a lot of disposable income can invest. And we do have options. Like I said, money markets is as low as 100 bob. So it's just 
not eating you know out for maybe you're not having a beer or just not buying that pair of shoes that you want but the key is just be consistent and be persistent so sit down aside and say before i start paying my rent or other expenses the first 10 percent and i'm not even saying 100 percent or 200 mm -hmm. percent just the first 10 percent of your salary or income should actually go to investments so you're going to put this aside this money aside consistently every month and it doesn't matter how small it is it could be a hundred bob it could be a thousand it could be ten thousand mm -hmm. but the fact that you are starting you see the key to investments for young people is start okay it doesn't matter where how just start, start. because every day that you're not investing you're actually losing out because you're not earning yet inflation is going up mm -hmm. So whatever you're going to earn will lose the value of money over time. So the main thing is just start. Okay. Yeah, start okay. small, start a hundred bob, start a thousand bob, but start, start today. And I'll, I'll give you a very simple example. Um, the, the main thing in investment, one of the key principles, um, Albert Einstein says it's the eighth wonder of the, eighth wonder of the world, is compounding interest. So the earlier you start, the more you have. I'll give you a very simple mm -hmm. example. Mm -hmm. If you start investing 5,000 every month from now for the next 40 years, say you're 20 yes. and you plan to retire at 60, mm -hmm. for the next 40 years, you'll actually end up with 25 million. What you really put in is... And that is how much? 25 million. 25 million and I'm investing how much? You're putting Capital 5K every 5K month. So every say, month. Um, say 5K um, for year, that's like 60K. Mm -hmm for like 40 years, it's, it's not much, you know, you've put in just maybe two, three million, but what you actually get after compounded interest is like 25 million. That's wow. if you start at 20 years, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Now, if you did the same thing and started at 30 years instead of 20 years, what you'd actually get is close to 10 million. So you see, you've lost 15 million by just not starting 10 years earlier. The power of compounding. Exactly. So the earlier you start, however the small, better the better for you. All right. Yeah. Then that brings me to my next question. What age is advisable for the youth to even think about the, the retirement account? It's actually as soon as you start having some income. And again, it goes back to the principle of compounded interest. Mm -hmm. Look, we all want to retire rich. And we all want to go on cruises. We want to Travel have a couple world. of... Yeah, we <laughs> need to. We want to have a couple of mansions here. Mm -hmm. There are villas, bungalows. You, mm -hmm. you know, we want to have all these things, and it is possible to have it all. I mean, maybe not a hundred percent, but a certain percentage. Mm -hmm. But the secret is start early. So the main thing you have to do as a youth is sit down and think. Okay. And I think a lot of us have an have an issue when we say think. We like doing things, but we don't really think and think it through. So you really have to sit down and say, what exactly do I want out of my life when I'm 30, when I'm 40, when I'm 50, and when I'm 60? So set yourself goals. And then when you set these goals, now work backwards. For me, maybe say to own a house by the time I'm 35 years old, how much money do I need? And for me to have this much money, how much am I investing every month? So you kind of work backwards and it will work out better for you than just go on investing randomly, you know. Your friend says put money in cryptocurrency, mm -hmm. you're there. Another friend says, you know, buy shares, you buy there, but you're not really putting any thought process. Mm -hmm. So I think the main mistakes we sometimes make is not putting a th thought process behind what when we invest. Okay. Yeah. One th another thing that I would like to find out from you, and uh, when, you, when you look at our school system mm -hmm. and what you do, like matters pertaining finances are not taught back in school and that end up ends up like affecting us yes like years down the line how important is it for kenyans to just adapt into the the kenyan youth the kenyan youth per se to just adapt to the the investment and save, saving culture so i don't even think it's only a kenyan school or education system mm -hmm. issue okay even i think internationally even people who go to finance school you'd get someone who's a graduate i'll give you an example of myself when i started my job i was already a cfa level two mm -hmm. but i had no practical experience in mm -hmm. investing so mm -hmm. it just it's about there in every country mm -hmm. so i think aside from the education system 
uh, parents, mentors, and coaches have to try to put um, investment uh, mentality. Mm -hmm. And I think the key here is parents and guardians, because now you have this, you can start this at a very young age, teaching um, kids as young as three years or four, four year olds the importance of money, mm -hmm. the importance of saving, even, even if it's through a piggy bank, the, the importance of denying yourself today for a better tomorrow. So if you can start implanting these thought concepts at a very young age, by the time someone is coming out of college, they're actually ready to start investing. Mm -hmm. And also I think um, it's also an investment firms to put up, because remember investment firms are also looking to grow their business, so they better provide some value for that, yeah? Yes. So there are lots of trainings. Saiton is one of the firms that does, does a lot of wealth management trainings, completely free of charge. And I know there are a lot of institutions out there who do them as well. Some mm -hmm. may charge, some may not charge. Okay. But what harm is there to just log in, spend half an hour, and get to know something a little bit more about money? All right. Yeah. When you look at a uh, couple of uh, African uh, uh, countries, uh, let's look at the Eastern Africa and Rwanda. We have the government uh, back there. Uh, it's really empowering the youth when mm -hmm. it comes to manufacturing sector. Mm -hmm. They're part of just, uh, the young people are also part of uh, the group that brings in the smartphones into mm -hmm. the country back in Rwanda. How do you feel the, our government, the Big Four Agenda, how does that translate to the young person? Just maybe thinking that uh, there are no opportunities back here at home, um, looking at the four, the, four big, uh, the four big agenda in our country, the Big Four, and I'm thinking, ah, where am I lying? Where am I really considered in this space? And what would you tell that person? Okay, so from my perspective, as far as opportunity, is concerned. Mm -hmm. Kenya has tremendous opportunities. In fact, the opportunities we have in developing worlds does not exist in the developed worlds. Mm -hmm. The reason is, for them, everything works perfectly. For us, most of the things don't work. And when things don't work, you have the opportunity to make them work and make money out of it in the process. So as far as the, four, uh, the Big Four agenda is yes. concerned, um, for me, I think when I, maybe it's the background I come from, or maybe it's how my attitude is in life, but I think it all boils down on the individual. You can't sit there saying, Serikali, idea Mimi, you know, <laughs> something of that sort. Mm -hmm. You really have to do it yourself. You have to take the step yourself and, you know, just figure it out how you're going to, to earn your own living and grow your own wealth. So there is... Well, maybe there's a godfather, but the government cannot be your godfather or godmother in how you start investing. So yes, they have the, it's, it's great that they have the big four agendas and it's great that they actually um, implement policies that enable or promote um, entrepreneurship, business, the youth and everything. But I think at the end of the day, it still boils, da boils down to you as an individual, as a youth, okay. to stand up and do things for yourself. All right. Yeah. Uh, going back to what you said, uh, that it goes back to uh, on an individual level. Yes. Do you feel like uh, self-employment is viable during this time of uh, COVID-19 pandemic? I think it's one of the very few things that's actually viable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because w w with jobs, I mean, um, most firms are downsizing. They're reducing force. Um, they're, you know, so for example, um, a company is going to reduce its staff. Mm -hmm. In, uh, because a lot of people are working from home or they're doing some, you know, uh, part-time in the office, part-time at home, then you'll need less office space when you need less office space. So by extension, less cleaners, less rent, less everything. So all these things are actually reducing. But when you're actually self-employed, mm -hmm. then, well, for a start, you won't fire yourself. And then <laughs> secondly, you can actually change your strategy. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe you used to have a shop and you used to sell from there and mm -hmm. now you feel like you can't afford the rent anymore, just go online. Online. Yeah. All right. Yep. It's very viable, yeah? Exactly. Okay, so let's look at some of the financial mistakes that the youth make while just being excited about investments, yeah? Because I'm thinking if I'm, I have 5K and I'm looking at the probability that probably in a three months time frame I will add a, a couple of extra uh, 3K or just go you know, all high on expectations. Well, what are a couple of mistakes that the young people do? So that th I think the first mistake most of us make is we don't start in time. Mm -hmm. You keep thinking, you'll wait, you keep procrastinating, waiting for that big sum, of, like you said, you're waiting for that big chunk of money to go invest. So that's the first mistake, is you don't have to wait there for the big money. In fact, it's not going to come there unless you're expecting some lottery or something you're going to win. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, the big chunk of money is not going to come there. So start as soon as possible with the little amount that you have. 
then secondly, we end up getting advice from the wrong people. So you'll find uh, friends discussing amongst themselves, where should we invest? And unless one of you is really a good investor and making mm -hmm. a lot of money, then you're actually asking the wrong set of friends, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Because if you all have the same experience, the same knowledge, then what are you really advising each other? So unless one of you is actually good at investments, maybe you should look out to an investment advisor and actually you can get lots of them free because they're also trying to sell products so you'll get free adv uh, you know investment advice then we end up investing by following the crowd okay. so we don't really invest in a product that we understand but we invest somewhere because that's where everyone is going you know so that's a very big mistake we do and like warren buffett says when everyone is um what does he say when when everyone is being fearless um, be greedy. No, when, when everyone is fearful, be greedy. And when everyone is greedy, be fearful. So that actually tells you don't do everything that everyone's doing because if they're all losing you, you're going to be one of them. So for you to actually make some money that's different from, you know, come out richer or more investment savvy than the rest, you can't be following the crowds. You need to sit down and say, okay, do I really understand? Like a lot of people are into Bitcoins, mm -hmm. but do you even understand how Bitcoins work? If you don't understand, please don't do it. So only invest in investments that you understand. Okay. Yeah. When I look at uh, uh, young, young people, I included, and we have this uh, struggle of mm -hmm. just living within our means and yes. just the struggle of just budgeting and having specific goals. How, yes. can we, how can we be rescued in that situation? Okay, so first it comes with awareness. So the self-awareness that yes, as you said, we have this issue. Mm -hmm. And then secondly is awareness by, figure, by learning or understanding how can you actually do it better. So it's, it's a couple of, you could actually Google or you could attend trainings, or, but the basics of it is first sit down and mm -hmm. have a budget. So write, this is my income and this is my expenses. Mm -hmm. And the first entry in your expense line should be pay yourself that 10% for investment. Mm -hmm. After that 10% that you're actually going to invest, then say this, break down your expenses into needs and wants. Okay. So when you've broken them into needs and wants, it's easier. Now we know the needs is what comes first. After the needs, if there's anything left, then go for once. If not, just try and live within your means. All right. I, yes. I believe you've answered my next question, which is all about uh, young people who actually get uh, minimum wage. Uh, yes. The kind of lifestyle they want to have. Yes. So uh, well, let's look at a couple of ways that young people have looked at ways we can... Uh, untapped uh, opportunities, yeah. investment opportunities, and uh, let's look at savings accounts. Okay, so um, I'll start with the savings accounts. Mm -hmm. For me, savings accounts are money for a rainy day, but okay. they're not money to make you grow rich. Oh, right. Because for you to grow rich, the return that you earn on your investment should beat inflation. Mm -hmm. Now, fl inflation in Kenya for this year, is, it's been fluctuating quite a bit. But it's around 5%, right? Mm -hmm. So investment accounts actually pay much lower than, or savings accounts pay much lower than 5%. So you're putting that money aside, like in case of a time like this when you don't have a job, then you have money to keep you going. In case there's a medical emergency or something of that sort, you can actually use your savings. But that money is growing at a much lower rate than inflation. So that means in years to come, mm -hmm. your money would have lost value. So that money, for sure, mm -hmm. it's very important to have. But just know that money is not going to make you rich. Okay. If you want to grow rich and um, grow rich, um, not, not necessarily in a bad way, but the end goal is when you retire, you want to have a financial freedom. Mm -hmm. You don't want to be dependent on um, anyone else for your upkeep. So if you want to got, get to the point that you're financially free, then you have to grow your passive income. Um, I'll give you a simple example. So um, we have two types of capital. There's human capital and then there's financial capital. Mm -hmm. So human capital is what you are worth in terms of your salary okay. or income, right? right? So taking a simple example, if you're earning 10,000 today, mm -hmm. um, so in a year, so you've earned 120,000, right? So in 50 years or 30 years or 20 years, whatever years you have to retire and multiply that mm -hmm. and say, for example, say now your net worth in terms of your human capital, how much you're worth earning over the next, um, say 30 years is around 
30 million that's how much you could actually earn okay. so now here this is a graph right so mm -hmm. you're starting here so the younger you are the higher your human capital is okay. not that you actually have 30 million but meaning that over your years that's what you can actually earn but your financial capital that means the money that comes from your investments is probably at mm -hmm. zero or closer to that mm -hmm. so as your years go by your capacity to earn is going less and less because you have less years yes. now at this point your financial capital needs to be going up so at the point you retire your income human capital is zero because you're not going to earn anything at this point your financial capital needs to have picked mm -hmm. so that's at its highest so at the point that you have no income from your salary the the income you earn from your investments needs to be the, at the highest. That's the point when you say you're financially free. Okay. Now you can retire and still have all the money. So yes, savings will never get you there. It's a good to have. It's an important yes. thing to have mm -hmm. because it will keep you going in bad times, rough weathers like this, right? Yes. But um, income is actually... But think about it. You know, they say three to six months is how much you should have as your savings, yes, right? Yes, yes. In Corona is yeah. five months down the line exactly. and we still have no end to it. Mm. So if this, God forbid, goes on for two years, then your savings will be depleted. So what would you really be relying on? You needed to have a passive income or some sort of investment income mm. that would keep you going in such a time. One thing I can tell you, Angela, in this conversation, what, one thing that is uh, cutting across is mm -hmm. how logical we should be when it comes to yes. uh, spending our money and True. even thinking about the future. Yes. And, and uh, still on that, but matters pertaining investment, mm -hmm for a young person who is watching this and they're wondering about stocks and shares, when is the right time to actually uh, purchase or invest in cheap stocks? Now. Because... So uh, now? Yes, right okay. now. Because okay. this is when the market is at a low. Mm -hmm. And if you buy now, mm -hmm. you will actually... This is the worst time to sell, but it's the best time to buy. Mm -hmm. In terms of crisis, stocks usually plunge. Mm -hmm. So that's the time you buy. So mm -hmm. that in the next... And Kenya has a resilient economy. Trust mm -hmm. me, mm -hmm. we've gone through post-election mm -hmm. violence, through droughts, through political issues. Mm -hmm. We've gone through a lot. We've gone through terrorism attacks and everything. And somehow we always bounce back. So Kenya has a wonderful, resilient economy. So we will always rebound and we'll always come back. And right now, everyone's... A lot of people are pessimistic. Mm -hmm. um, they don't want to think about tomorrow. They, they think like, and, and I mean, fairly so, reasonably mm -hmm. so. Right now, the most important thing is number one, to have food on your plate, and secondly, to stay healthy. Mm -hmm. So yes, but in a few years to come, in maybe the next two or three or four years, COVID will be behind us. So if you actually bought your stock at the loan now, um, like KCB would be trading at, say, around 40 right now. but. By the time everything rebounds, the value of, say, the share would be at around 70, 80 bob. So you could actually end up doubling your money by putting it in stocks. And remember, stocks is supposed to be a long-term goal, not short-term goal. The mistakes we make is we buy a stock today and then the next day we see the price is falling, so you start selling. Mm -hmm. So it's also important for you to be patient enough to hold on to your stock. Give it time. Give it time. Let the markets go up and down. Just sit there. Wait patiently for your money to grow. All right. Yeah. And then another another burning question will be: How do we identify uh, credible uh, spaces to invest in? Because we have uh, uh, circles that are coming in yes. into into this space, and we also have uh, uh, investment uh, from a uh, couple of banks yes. and microfinances that mm -hmm. are com uh, coming in also into the market. How uh, how do we identify credible spaces to invest in? Okay. So they, there's um, a lot of different ways and they're actually more investment specific so i'd say if it's something like land then obviously there's due diligence like do your search see who owns the land um if you can get a copy of the history of the land what's going on or no um if it's a stock then you have to look at the fundamentals of the farm so there's a lot that you can look at but it's actually also not a one shoe size fits all it different depends on the investment uh, asset class that you're going for but in general, just maybe use common sense. Mm -hmm. um, look at uh, look at the governance mm -hmm. of the company. Corporate mm -hmm. governance is very, very important, especially in Kenya. Mm -hmm. So look at the corporate governance. Do you trust the management of the company that sells whatever product it is that's selling, whether it's land, whether it's a stock? 
Um, if you do trust the corporate governance, that's a good sign. Um, then look at how they have been performing, the growth, is it an investment that's growing? And then look at how they react to um, incidences, crises like uh, maybe Corona. Are they open with their communication? Do they tell you exactly what's happening? Because also remember, it's a very uncertain time. No one really knows what's going on, what we should do. So you can't really blame a management team for not doing the right thing because again, nobody knows. Nobody has mm -hmm. encountered this before. But what's important is that there's clear communication. What are you doing and why are you doing it? So it's okay if it ends up being wrong, but you can always then sit back and say, well, three months back, this is what we thought. It's not turned out as it, we thought it is, so we are changing our strategy. But companies that actually constantly keep communicating to their clients, there's transparency, there's visibility. So these are some of the things that you can look at. Right. For someone, for a young person who's watching this conversation and they would like to get into investments and savings and they recently lost their jobs and mm -hmm. they're wondering, what are you guys talking about? I'm here going through a lot. Yes. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm at the lowest uh, point of, in my life. Yes. I'm barely making uh, ends meet. What would yes. be your, what would be your uh, kind of advice for, towards that? towards that kind of person. Okay, so first the most important thing right now is have food on your plate and stay healthy. Mm -hmm. So as long as you have these two, whatever little you have, I mean, forget about eating out, forget about drinking. I think this, if, this, if there was ever any time to be frugal, this is the time to be frugal. Mm -hmm. Just cut down your expenses as much as you can. Mm -hmm. If that 100 bob or you know, 1,000 bob you'd have actually spent on buying something else, mm -hmm. this is the time to actually invest it. Because in the long run, this is what's going to keep you going. All right. Yeah. So, uh, getting your uh, uh, final remarks on on, uh, on a particular issue that I'd like us to get to get into. So, the KNBS uh, second uh, second quarter labor force report shows that that the number of unemployed increased from four thousand four million yes six hundred and thirty-seven thousand mm -hmm. hundred and sixty-four between April and June, mm -hmm. uh, compared to two million mm -hmm. three hundred and twenty-nine thousand hundred and seventy-six in the same period last year, 2019. Yeah. So this means 1.7 million Kenyans have lost their jobs due to COVID-19. Yes. I'd like to get your remarks on that and also uh, just uh, connecting it to matters pertaining uh, you getting into investments and savings. And uh, earlier on, you had a conversation about uh, the cool aspect of just white collar jobs yes so definitely it's very sad when anybody loses their job it's not a good thing even even when we've seen colleagues we've seen um, friends family losing their jobs or sometimes even not losing but being in that uncertain field of you will be called at any time and you'll get your exit letter at any point in time so even that uncertainty is mm -hmm. very very depressing it takes a toll on your mental health um, as long as, and also it's, it really impacts how you can plan ahead. Because you know, if you know you have a stable job, you can actually plan ahead. But when you don't know whether you have a job tomorrow or no, mm -hmm. I can't even be telling you this is what you should commit yourself to be doing. So um, it's very sad, yes. But then again, we need to live, we need to survive. So get over it. Um, just think, this is what life has thrown my way. I may like it, I may not like it, but there's nothing I can do to change what life has thrown my way, but I can change how I deal with it and how I react to it. So again, this is the right time. And I've seen a lot of people have side hustles all of a sudden. I mean, Kenyan, we're known as hustlers, mm -hmm. but in the last few months, the side hustles has really gone up quite a bit. So it is actually time for people to think of other things they can do to just give them that additional income, whether it's selling clothes online or you know, whether it's you know being a real estate agent, trying to sell properties for someone. There's a lot you can do. You can open a vlog, I'll tell you interestingly, uh, when we started advertising a little bit more on Instagram for size suites, uh, service departments, a lot of people just inbox me asking me, can you give me a free apartment stay in return? I'd actually go and promote your I'd go and promote your apartment because I have an X number of followers, yes. which now just makes sense that people have started becoming entrepreneurial. They're thinking, how can I get something free or how can I get some income? Using what I have. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So I have followers and there's something I can do out of this. Yeah. 
So I think this is the right time. People need to start thinking out of the box. Forget the white collar jobs. If you have them, you're lucky. Mm -hmm. Good for you. If you don't have them, figure out how else you can make money. If you and I'm sure and I know everyone in this world is talented. We all have different talents. There are people who are good in finance, there are people who are good in carpentry, there are people who are good in cooking, and there are people who are just good with motivational talks. Whatever your talent is, make use of it, come up with vlogs, come up with blogs, do something that will mm -hmm. earn your passive income. All right, yeah. last question and tell. How can, you, how can young people have the best relationship with, with money? Three tips only. The, the best relationship? <laughs> yes. So number one, be disciplined. Okay. It's very, very important, right? Mm -hmm. um, number two, be consistent and persistent. In number three, research, 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 research. Invest in yourself, learning. I mean, I think a few years back, uh, maybe my parents or grandparents' generation, they didn't have Google. We have Google. It has the answer to everything in this world. So if, if, if you can keep searching, researching what other people are doing, how they're doing it, what's the best way, what are the mistakes, what are the... Every time you read, you'll always obviously learn something new and it keeps making you a better version of yourself. Yeah. All right, so there's window of opportunities for the young people even during this time of COVID-19. Definitely. Okay, thank yes. you very much, Antel, for creating time to be with us and just uh, bringing uh, light on matters pertaining investments and savings concerning young guys, especially during this time of COVID-19 and when uh, then and, and guys who are actually unemployed and the employment and an unemployment rate actually skyrocketing not just in Kenya but also globally so sure. thank you very much for uh, being with us and giving us more uh, advice pertaining investments and savings so probably could give us the social media handles if you have any questions we can engage with you yeah sure I'm just on Facebook Hetal mm -hmm. Natwani mm -hmm. yeah I my Instagram are actually the business pages but okay. yeah you can go to the site on investments handles mm -hmm. in here uh, throw in your questions there okay Great. so there you have it guys make sure you follow us across all our social media handles that is at y254 channel at michelle ashira is where you can find me right now we're going for a musical break and we'll be right back